Let's talk about the specifics of the mechanisms of catalysis. We'll get into the details of what the mechanisms look like in a second, but I wanted to start with general principles about catalytic mechanisms first. Catalysts are regenerated in the course of a reaction mechanism. So one way to draw a catalytic mechanism from the perspective of the catalyst is as a cycle called a catalytic cycle. Since we need to get back the original catalyst structure at some point in the mechanism, from the catalyst perspective, the reaction is cyclic. Within the catalytic cycle, we see reactants entering. So for example, here comes reactant A and here comes reactant B into the cycle, not necessarily in a single step. Here we see A and B entering at different steps and we see products exiting the cycle. And so here we see product C exiting. On the whole, if we look at the net reaction, if we add up all of these elementary steps, we get A plus B gives C and the catalyst does not appear in the overall balanced chemical equation since it's regenerated. Another thing to notice is that the active catalyst species, the thing that actually engages with the reactants, may not be the compound that's put into the reaction mixture. It may not be the, for example, compound that's drawn over or under the arrow in the reaction scheme. That compound might be what we call a pre-catalyst that undergoes chemical change in order to form the active catalyst. A very simple example of this can be found in Bronsted acid catalysis, where, for example, we might see written catalytic HCl over the arrow, but if we're working in aqueous solution or a relatively dilute solution of HCl in water, the active catalyst is really the conjugate acid of water, hydronium ion, H3O+. And although it's not drawn here, it's also possible for these other catalytic intermediates to form so-called off cycle species through reversible reactions that generate species that are off the cycle. These can affect the kinetics, although we won't generally worry about off cycle species too much in this course. Within the cycle, we find what are called catalytic intermediates. And one of the interesting things about the catalytic intermediates is that each of these can be thought of as the catalyst, quote unquote, because each of these could be generated theoretically from a pre-catalyst in different ways, and that would lead to the same catalytic cycle. So for example, if it was possible for us to generate the catalyst intermediate with C through the use of a different pre-catalyst in the presence of A and B, we could get to this same catalytic cycle starting from a different pre-catalyst. So in that sense, each of these catalytic intermediates can be thought of as the catalyst, quote unquote. A second important point to understand here is that the steps within the cycle do not need to be thermodynamically favored. And this is easy to appreciate if we think about the thermodynamics of the catalyst as the cycle proceeds. At the start of the cycle, say here at point one, the catalyst is at some energy. At the end of the cycle, we actually have to get back to point one in a situation where the catalyst has the same structure as it did when it started. And in order to do this, it's likely that we're going to go uphill in energy in some steps, in other words, delta G positive in some steps, and then down in energy in other steps. The way I like to put this is what goes up must come down and what goes down must come up. So the thermodynamics of steps within a catalytic cycle may be favorable or unfavorable. If you're used to drawing reaction mechanisms in which each step is favorable or there's one key irreversible step that's thermodynamically favorable, you may not be as used to this idea, but we're going to do things like protonate groups that look like they're not the most basic group in a molecule, and acid catalysis, or deprotonate hydrogens that don't look as acidic as those in the conjugate acid of whatever base we're using, and things like this. So you will see thermodynamically disfavored steps, and I just want to put you at ease that within catalytic mechanisms, these are not only okay, but to be expected. Now that said, Catalysis will only work if the overall reaction is thermodynamically favored. So a catalyst doesn't affect the standard free energy change of the reaction, or as I put it, the thermodynamics of the reaction. In order for catalysis to work, it must be the case that the overall reaction here, A plus B going to C in this example, is thermodynamically favored. In other words, the standard delta G must be less than zero. With these general points out of the way, we're going to look at four specific examples of modes of catalysis in which the catalyst serves the role of a Bronsted acid, Bronsted base, Lewis base, 
or Lewis acid. And these four roles we've seen previously as the four possible roles that any molecule can serve in in the course of a mechanism. Catalysts are no different. I mean, these are four of the most important and common modes of catalysis.